Welcome back to the roll up. Today we have a technical presentation about the Nuffle Labs ABS. Welcome to Eigenlayer Unlocked, an interactive educational journey through the Eigenlayer ecosystem created by technical founders and builders for the entire crypto community. A special thank you to our partners, All Layer, Polymer, Authentic, Skate, and Lagrange for helping to make this happen. Our goal is to raise the collective knowledge of the Eigenlayer AVS ecosystem and unpack the technical designs of the top teams in space. Welcome to Eigenlayer Unlocked. Welcome back to the roll up. Today we have a technical presentation about the Nuffle Labs AVS. I'm looking forward to this one with Alton and Bharat. Welcome in, guys, and let's get started. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm Alton, by the way, one of the founders of Nuffle. Um, Frat and I worked together at Near before starting Nuffle Labs. Um, yeah, I can I can quickly get into what we do. Um, a couple of folks know us from Waffles and all that kind of memes, but uh, we're a pretty technical team. So let's let's start and uh, deep dive. Um, we've started our story started with Near DA. Uh, we're the team that built Near DA back in last year. Um, this was a sort of a solution that we built, seeing that there's going to be tons of L2s. And there's going to be a need for cheap, secure uh, data availability. So currently, we have one rollup on mainnet uh, that's in top 25 called RSS3. Uh, we were able to drop their costs by 99%, and uh, we're getting we're getting way and more and more rollups come in to testnet and mainnet in Q3 and Q4. Um, while we're building this, we saw another opportunity uh, because if you're launching a lot of rollups, uh, there's this state and liquidity fragmentation. So Traditionally, you used to bootstrap a, a L1 uh, for a decentralized network to be able to do this. Uh, we know there's a bunch of folks that are doing this as an L1, but our approach was to be more practical and go to Ethereum and say, hey, can we actually grab um, sort of some crypto economic security to, uh, to build a new decentralized network? So for that reason, we're building currently on Testnet, which is the Nuffle Fast Finality Layer AVS. That leverages near DA to uh, store rollup sequences, allows you to sort of do uh, state aggregation and give that to give that state sort of back to applications to be able to build cross chain applications um, and uh, even like fast liquidity bridges. So we can we can deep dive into some of the applications later. Um, and at last, we're building something new with Eigenlayer. We'll talk about that at the end too. Uh, we're quite excited of it as a team. Uh, we're calling that Nuff Protocol that is currently in the interop and uh, restating space. So um, let's get into some of the things that we are trying to solve. Obviously, modularity is great, but there are certain problems we're seeing, which is fragmentation, terrible UX, and terrible security. And that's where I know Andy knows where chain abstraction comes in. So fragmentation, uh, if you look at, obviously, the couple of rollups that are top, right? So you're seeing a lot of TVL being distributed across Arbitrum, OP, Base, and other rollups that were getting getting spin up. Um, we see a terrible UX. I always give this example of osmosis. Like, you don't know where to send the funds to. Um, we want to solve this problem. Like, we, we just want to make sure that, ideally, the user should be able to uh, not know where, the, where they are putting the assets in. The other thing is terrible security. Obviously... Um, we, uh, if you're launching a new rollup, you're creating a new, almost like a, a there's a new L2, right? So instead, um, the security is going to be terrible. Why not rely on? Why not rely on Ethereum? So that's how we're thinking about it uh, in terms of problems. And obviously, like we started with near DA, uh, that solves the DA problem. But we think near DA is not enough uh, to solve some of the liquidity, uh, some of the state and liquidity fragmentation problems. And that's why we're building on Eigenlayer. Um, so what we're building is the Nuffle Fast Finale there, AVS, which is called NFFL, if you go to Holski Testnet today. Um, it is a fast and secure settlement layer. So it leverages in the design uh, near DA and Eigenlayer to provide interoperability. So we verify state attestations with currently restaked ETH. Um, this currently, um, this has no sort of, this doesn't care what sequencer you're use, using, and eventually is not going to care about what DA are using too. So we will integrate like Eigen DA and Avail, uh, and this becomes almost like this universal fast finality layer, allowing 
the layer two stuff, if they really want to use it for certain reasons, like L2 to L1 bridging, they can use that. But also we will use this for um, cross-chain applications too. And the benefit of this is like, you know, for OP, there's like an OP plasma. So for that to happen, like, you know, you need to be by OP plasma. But for us, it's like, it really doesn't matter. It's like, it could be a ZK rollup and an optimistic rollup. We want to be able to interrupt them pretty easily. So that's the goal uh, is to be very um, sort of credibly neutral for any rollup to be able to use our fast finality layer. So this design is uh, pretty interesting. This is our first design. Um, so there's a couple of pieces going on here and I'll, I'll break it down how this works. Um, so if we were using two L1s <laughs> to build a solution, which is quite interesting. Um, so we have Ethereum, obviously, that's where the smart contract sets are for the AVS. Uh, this is usually very, um, almost like, uh, it's almost very standardized in AVS, um, um, AVS design. You have contracts to be able to put the states in. Um, this is called middleware contracts on, on, on Ethereum. Um, and we have the near DA smart contract. So near DA smart contract is for every network. We're currently keeping a blob contract on near. So for our own um, sort of rollups, this comes out of box, right? You just you just already have a near DA smart contract. But for like OP Arbitrum and others, like we can just relay those sequences to near and then use that sequence after there is uh, some sort of consensus on that sequence take that and use those sequences. Um, on the rollups, uh, we have obviously smart contracts that check network state attestations. Ideally, after the after we have um, we have crypto economically backed state routes, we'll push that to other rollups so that they can be used there. Um, and obviously there's some off-chain architecture. That's the point of um, Eigenlayer. So we have an operator that runs pretty much currently a full node. Uh, and then attests and then checks the, you get the sequence from near DA, you run a full node, and then you check whether that's the, the sequence is correct. So, um, and then there's a bunch of operators doing this, right? So let's say currently like 25, um, eventually maybe 100. Uh, and then all of these are aggregated to ensure that's where the consensus piece is coming in, aggregated to ensure that there's uh, old operators are, converging into one state route for that rollup. So to get more in deeper into Ethereum, there's obviously restakers, right? That's what Eigenlayer is using. Uh, they restake their capital to Eigenlayer core contracts. You have the middleware contract that essentially facilitate the interaction between the off-chain nodes that is our operator set and the Eigenlayer protocol. And uh, the other thing is obviously Restakers delegate their restake eat to the operators, which then technically becomes like in the L1 sets validators, right? To the validate. But they're off chain, they're not doing any blockchain validation. Instead, they are validating that the state is correct for those L2s that are that we are uh part that we are taking. Um so what we yeah, do real quick, Elton. Um I actually want to come back here. So, so, so this is the broad design for the fast finality layer, right here. Yes, correct. correct. Okay, and so, um, like, just very broadly speaking, why, why use eigenlayer? Like, like, why do you need eigenlayer in this design? Or, like, I understand the economic security aspect, but why did you guys choose to use eigenlayer to to facilitate the the part within Ethereum? rather than using like a different form of security whether it be through something like zk or just using like a a typical sequencer model or something of that extent like like what is the what is the reasoning behind using eigenlayer here yeah so there's a couple of things one of them is we're trying to get to the state root of a roll up as fast as possible and as cheap as possible apart from the capital cost of grabbing security from eigenlayer which also we're working on with eigenlayer um, first of all, you cannot, for now, you cannot ZK every VM out there. Um, so you cannot really go ahead and be like, okay, now I'm going to run a ZK VM for this specific rollup and then get the state route out because one, it's too costly. And then two is some of them is that's just not possible. Um, and if it, if, even if it's possible, um, today's ability rollups take at least an hour 
let's say minutes because Succinct Flat says minutes now. Um, let's say it takes up to an hour. What we're trying to provide is a service that is grabbing post-execution, call it post-execution, because Rushi calls it post-execution now, um, at three to four seconds. And that is not possible right now to do it through any ZK. Um, ZK yeah. VM. So that is why we're grabbing security, we're grabbing crypto economic security to go fast as possible. So what is the trade-off that you make by achieving faster finality? Where, what is yeah. this uh, security trade-off that you make? Yeah. So when you are running an OP rollup, for example, or a ZK rollup, before ZK, yeah, both of them, you grab the security, full security of Ethereum validator set, right? Because the validity of the state route is being checked either by the validity proof that is coming from a ZK uh, prover, or you play the seven day game where you just wait for one out of an honest uh, validator or fisherman, if you want to call it. But at the end of the day, the decision maker is um, Ethereum. What we're doing is we're grabbing a part of the Ethereum validator set by the restake ETH and attest to a um, state root of any rollup that we integrate with. So the, the trade-off is that you don't 100% inherit the whole validator set of Ethereum, but you get partial validator set of Ethereum to attest to state root. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, okay, so then I'm a... I am a malicious uh, roll-up sequencer or operator connected to the Nuffle fast finality layer. Mm -hmm. I am engaging in cross cross domain or cross roll-up transactions that are trying to settle state across multiple roll-ups at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, commit some. Uh, malicious ZK proof or uh, a a fraudulent transaction in an optimistic setting that has knock-on effects across other roll-up states if that proof goes through or if that optimistic verification after the seven-day window happens. Um, but I'm going to do that in the Nuffle fast finality layer so that I can get that finality much quicker and I can uh, basically execute this attack way faster. How do you guys how how do you guys stop me? Yeah. Like, so what, for, yeah, first of all, as a rollup, you if you lie, so there's two things. One of them is you can lie in the sequence, so you can post a sequence and don't bond on it, and then you can post another sequence. That's problem number one, which we're working with a with another AVS that is called Radius, who's trying to solve this. They're trying to bond on the sequence for, uh, for as a decentralized sequencer set. So the and when second you say thing sequence, is, is that like, does that mean like a, a like a block or like a set of blocks? Yeah. So what a sequence is in rollups is basically a bunch of transactions put into one and compressed. So that is what yeah, yeah. rollups are putting on DA layer, right? And what and basically when you put it on the DA layer and you get finalized, um, then you have assurance from Ethereum that this is the po this is the thing that the rollup basically posted to me. But it can never promise that it's not going to change. That's up to the sequencer. The sequencer it later says. Well, I posted this, but now I want to do this. They can still do it. You have to have some bonding, basically, to have um, enough security. That's like the secret. That's like the centralized aspect of sequencers, right? Um, so that's one thing that they can lie. The other thing that they can lie, which is very, very difficult, because they have to change in seven days how the execution client is running, is change the execution client. And then now we have a mismatch between the state root and then the sequence, so that you have a mismatch between the inputs. And then the state transition function. So if you change the transition function, you will have different outputs, right? So let's, that's one. That that's the thing that can go wrong. So what NFFL allows you to. So first of all, that is a single sequence of fault. In NFFL, we right. have multiple operators running the same state transition function, right? So you have almost like a validator set of bunch of different executors running the same thing, and then providing signatures that they that, that what they think is the correct state route. So if eventually there is a problem that we see that anybody can basically say, hey, wait a minute, there's a problem with the state root, they're lying. What we will trigger is a slashing event where the, the operators who lied will get slashed for the state roots that they 
um, attest to. Okay, so we're we're relying on operators to effectively uh, commit to truth out of the repercussion of being slashed. Yes. Um, and then we're expecting these operators to to have some sort of like technical knowledge in in knowing where there's like misalignment or f like basically fraud in the system or like like what is the reliance on the operators per se and the reliance on the operators is that they run the state transition provided by the rollup because the rollups provide the state transition that they run the, that it. correctly understood yeah cool um we'll, we'll talk more about slashing and stuff in a bit but that was my main kind of questions on this design um that's it is it is solid. sort of pre-confirmations done correct by that's what i'm getting to done by restaked eth not the block producers but operators well, that all agree that uh, operators that all agree that you know this is this this is going to be the state in 12 minutes but instead we're going to say that it's, it's going to be the state in three seconds so that you guys can use it if, if i'm lying i'm going to get slashed because it's like a new it's 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 pretty much like it's very useful for if you're trying to move between altos pretty pretty fast right like if you're trying to yeah. fill an order or stuff like that that's like so I'm gonna release yeah. this pretty fast. You know? You're getting you're getting partial um, validated set confirmation yeah. um, for the finality for the things that you're getting attested on instead of just full finality um, from Ethereum. It's yeah. a trade off with right? yeah with the with 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 eigen token slashing basically yes. is is the current state yeah exactly uh, so eventually if, is the goal for eth yeah exactly so like basically grabbing a certain amount of eth and then saying if i lie please take this away from me yes yeah cool and usually these people are like you know like galaxy digitals of the world where they're actually like validators right so they're validators on ethereum and yeah. they're restaking their ethereum and then they becoming operators so they already have like they already there's a relationship between ethereum validator set and an nffl validator set right so that's kind of the mapping maybe it's not as big as the is not as big as the ethereum validator set let's say it's like huge right but you still get like the the large large uh, ethereum validators to be to be part of it I'm glad that we're uh, relying on USA public companies for our uh, ec economic security. Truly, it could, be, it could be, it could be you too. Like it doesn't matter. Right? We'll, we'll whitelist you for <laughs> the solo staker <laughs> conversation has been hot on Twitter too. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, actually, probably it's it's very beneficial for you because you're also like burning a lot of capital, right? So now you get more yield on top of your validator, like being a validator yourself. If Andy wants to be a validator, obviously. Um, so um, cool. But we were here, right, on Ethereum. Yes. I think, so. um, I think we talked about Ethereum. So we were talking about near DA. So near DA is where we're posting the data, right? The roll-up data. So we have a block relayer that actually dumps the data from. Um, if you're using near DA, you're already like dumping data to near. But if you're an OP. There's a block relayer that basically sends it, sends the, the 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 blobs to near DA, and this is where you get consensus on the sequence. And then operators come in. They run it currently a near indexer, right? To just get the in get the literally the blobs. So they they take the blocks and they run a node, which is the state transition function that Frat was all talking about, and saying, "Hey, the data I'm getting and the 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 result I'm getting are the same. So this must be the same. They are just basically attesting that state root saying these two results are correct. Um, so we're using like, obviously near DA is, is pretty, like it's a solution that works pretty fast. So that's why fast finality there comes in. It's two seconds to three seconds, uh, two second finality on near blocks. Um, ideally in the future, like we would want to integrate like Eigen DA where there's a lot of like Eigen DA customers that can use this. And there's also like Avail that we're talking to just kind of get like them to integrate it so that we're making this kind of a universal solution for, uh, for everyone. Real quick. What does SFFL mean? It used to be, it used to be super fast finality there, but then, Got it. then we're like th two of these three seconds is fast, but it's not like super fast. So let's just call it. Let's remove that uh, S. Um, so it's NFFL and currently. replace it with a with an N. 
Okay. And which is and, not um, what is the components of this aggregator? This, yeah, this aggregator. Festival? Aggregator is uh, for now since operators are basically signing things and then they need to yes. send them to Ethereum and then if you send Ethereum signatures, uh, sorry, if you send operator signatures all the time to Ethereum, the cost is gonna like blow up because of Ethereum fees. What we do is we basically aggregate them in one place. Makes it sense. could be for now it's just a server, but it doesn't matter because it's it's we're trying to avoid the the tragedy of the commons by basically taking up the um, taking up the role of providing these signatures in a sparse Merkle tree that is created on SFFL aggregator or NFFL aggregator so that we can verify it more cheaply. We're also planning to decentralize this and then put probably the aggregator directly on near DA because it's so cheap to do it there so that we can grab it later on through an indexer. So there's no problem that like there's no centralized point. Um, it's in the works. It should be, it should be out with the, with the main net. So it's kind of similar to like a Comet BLS kind of signature scheme where it just aggregates all this, all the yeah, signatures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And that's being ran right now by some node within the, a network or No, like it's, it's just one, one server right now for, for, because we're on testnet, right? We're just for convenience for the operators to send their signatures in one place. And like I said, to avoid the strategy of the commons, where basically nobody's yeah, responsible yeah. for anything. We just do it for ourselves. But eventually what we're gonna have what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy a contract on near DA where everything goes there. So it's a decentralized place. And then yes. we can just relay them back. Got it. Yeah. And the usefulness of this is like then we can turn this aggregator. Maybe we haven't talked about it, but Fred is working on SDK that can pull this and like let developers use it. So they can just say, Hey, I'm gonna build an app from OP to ARB so that we can make it pretty easy to use that. Uh, for straight routes, so that's the goal. Like that's what the Hello Protocol is meant to meant to use it here. Like let's say a general message passing protocol. Like we're working with a bunch of like cross chain lending platforms, so they can integrate with the SDK to kind of do like pretty fast uh, lending. Um, okay, so um, we talked about this already, but there's a lot of off chain nodes, right? So there's an indexer that takes the data uh, and then uh, compare the roll up data. Uh, we already talked about operator nodes signing a message to attest to the state. Uh, and finally, I just talked about it as well. Like this is a BLS signature aggregation. When we have a consensus, then we can aggregate into an API and give it to a DevRel or a developer. You know, give it to like Nader or something and be like, "Hey, let's build an app." Right? Like that'd be that's the ideal state. <laughs> and then the cool thing about this is like you can be a you can be like an OP app, OP rollup, and it can be an ARB rollup, and we can just like do um, interop between them. Um, let it like I'm collecting an NFT on OP and I want to do something on ARB, we can design that sort of design space. That's what we're quite excited about, apart from bridges and all the other stuff that you can build on here. Um, cool. So NFFL in practice. Um, we talked about a couple of different things. Um, so cross-chain landing platforms, this is the one that we're actively exploring and have a couple of partners coming to be announced this, this month. Um, we're interested in like crossing applications in general. Like I already talked about it, where like use your lens profile in an L2. Um, <clears throat> ideally, we're we're also integrating with as a layer zero DVN, so that will allow us to build like uh, fast bridges between like eigen DA rollups between our rollups. So that's going to be quite exciting. Uh, and then the other things that we like, you can literally build anything that can combine two or more different L2s for now. But the future is, I guess. It's going to be any L1 to L2. Like that's kind of the, the future vision. Um, and with with the guarantees of obviously like decentralized sets on the both ends on the, on the L1 and L2 or L1 to L1 doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. So any anything here that's that maybe comes to your mind, Andy, given given we, you've seen this uh, you've seen this architecture now. Um. I mean, I just have more technical questions and more about the AVS and the slashing stuff. So I don't know if, if we want to go over those now or or if, if that can come up in a bit. But uh, I mean, there's a ton of there's a ton of use cases for settling cross cross rule up transactions amongst different. I mean, there's there's just I mean, it's it's almost endless. So I'm I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, in this stuff over the line generally, regardless of the design. I mean, this is a really cool design. Super excited for like coordinated block building and even just like intents that are super fast. Just anything that we can do to like get these cross domain transactions going enables that kind of like chain abstracted experience. So, um, exactly. yeah, gen broadly excited. Um, nothing in particular here. Awesome. 
and if do you you said you have questions on um slashing now or because the, the other one is like enough protocol if you want to ask something it also has yeah slashing. sure yeah, yeah sure so um okay so where do you guys see the demand for Nuffles AVS coming from? Mm -hmm. And like, is there any way that we can know what an estimated yield uh, uh, variance could be for this? Like, how does one understand where the, like who, who's going to use this? And, and like, should people restake to Nuffle? Like what's the, what's the expected demand and yield going to be? Yeah, I can talk about this a little bit. So first, all the applications that will use this at some point, just like other DeFi, will will have transaction fees. So that is where the yield will come from. Um, the other thing is obviously just like in either L1, they will get they, you know there's there's a chance that you might get another token. I'm not going to say what token it is because uh, it's a public conversation. But uh, you know that's the two sources of I guess yield, right? Which is one that's going to be transaction fees that you'll be getting it from. It's like an L1 pretty much. And then two is the the inflation, right? So like there's there's going to be maybe not an inflation, maybe something else, but you know there's going to be some token that you'll be getting to be part of part of the NFFL uh, operator set. So transaction fees from what? Uh, from the finalizing state transitions, or from the DA posting, or from the, the like the pre conf S service, making sure that the finality gets done. Like, and like what is that going to like? Yeah, like what's that model? So the so there's two things. Usually it's going to be the applications who are going to be using these services, and then they can reflect the, the fees onto their users, or they can eat the cost up. That's the that's the beauty of it, right? But the the majority of the fees are going to be since we're going to be paying the operators, the the fees that are going to be paid is going to be from the applications that are using um, these cross chain fast settling. Um, primitives, let's say, and think about it like a lending platform that you that there are two, two contracts on two different L2s and then you're using it. Either the L2, uh, sorry, either the, the, the application was doing cross-chain lending can pay for the fees of grabbing the, for per attestation, right? Because they, they need these attestations um, to kind of pay for the fast settlement or they can reflect it onto their users. Okay. Okay, so we have this world where there's a, some sort of model where you guys will be charging fees as you kind of explained ho hoping that's not like an opt-in mechanism where people can only opt in and then they have vendor lock-in um and then eventually there could be other forms of rewards and so i'm a restaker and i'm like i'm looking at this system i'm looking at the other avs's i'm like okay maybe I'll, I'll deploy uh my capital into nuffle they seem to have a good business model they have uh like a real product market fit um what am, what are the slashing rules what is the risk to my restate capital that is gonna uh basically come to come to play and how will you guys enforce the slashing rules and like what do you guys envision those to be and then also, like, where are you guys at in the development of uh, writing your slashing contracts? And kind of, like, how's that experience been? Yeah, good question. So so there's two strategies that we're looking into for slashing. Because the, the slashing happens when the operator lies about something, right? The slashing happens if they run a state transition function maliciously. That they, they, they just came up with a state transition function that doesn't exist. Um, the other part that is a little bit more tricky is what happens if while we're attesting to these L2 decides to fork, because now the state transition function is weird, right? That is something that we're looking into and we're going to be looking into with Eigenlayer also together. So wait, wait, the what's the core problem there is like if the, if the, the L2 reorgs, then yeah. the operator doesn't know which chain to attest to? Or... Yeah, basically. So what is the canonical chain, right? If the L2 right. if the L2 forks, we don't know which trans state transition function is the correct one. And then like, who decides it is the correct one, we don't know. There's like, like some kind yeah, of training wheel. It's, it's a weird consensus. situation, right? It's social consensus. Yeah. And that's where we're probably going to be using Ivan token, because for that specific reason, it makes a lot of sense. Um, if there's okay. a social consensus problem, just go with Ivan token and use the Ivan token to decide what the social consensus says. Um, but the objectively verifiable one, which is basically I as an operator run something that is not correct, we're going to be slashing based on a fraud proving game. 
where after, let's say, X amount of blocks, before we settle on um, Eigen layer, um, there's going to be a fisherman, which we will also reward, um, just like an operator, where we're going to be saying, oh, he lied. And then this, we uh, we slash the operator that is going to be, um, that that has their stake up front. There's this, there's this other question maybe that, um, Andy, you might be, you might be interested in answering, which is what happens to the slash funds, right? That's yeah. on the eigenlayer model, essentially on the eigen token, the the ones that are actually correct get the get the like slash money back or slash tokens back, right? In our case, the it could be the, right? the, yeah, yeah, it could be the other case where like if I'm in the right side of the operator set, like uh, the this this is a wrong like he he has executed a wrong state transition function minus correct yes. and we already agreed that like this is the case and these guys got slashed we get that money back so this is like an idea we're not like finalized but i i would suspect this this is going to be seen in a bunch of different avs it is as well it is called people who are watching this go and read the paper it's called stake sure it's from yeah. serum yes um, we have a so post or a, yeah. a video coming with them as well it's really yeah, interesting it's, it's, uh, like, it's a very let's all gang up idea. on each other Let's put the <laughs> let's put all the operators against each other when they're supposed to be working together and like make them stitch on each other like we're in kindergarten. But it's I mean well, it, someone's so got to do it, right? The idea there is that basically if there's somebody's lying, there should be no one who's affected by the problems that the operator is causing. So that the operator's yes. life funds should go back to the other operators and also the users. It's a mm -hmm. very interesting model, which kind of goes into like kind of insurance that you buy. It's a different topic, but um, it is very, very cool. So I think we're going to be also implying some, some kind of uh, logic there to basically, if somebody gets slashed, well, the person who gets slashed should pay the other people who get affected. So in this model, in the S, in the SF or NFFL, SFL operator attesting to the aggregator, that is where there would be the slashing logic baked in to, to that part of this diagram or, or like where exactly would this be baked into? Uh-huh. The, the, the slashing logic will always be on eigenlayer. Eigenlayer decides okay. if somebody's getting rewarded or slashed. So there's going to be, right. it is not live yet. Eigenlayer is working on it. We're also looking at, looking into it. If you go to like Eigenlayer's um, testnet contracts, you can see that there's work being done on it. Um, but no matter what happens, we cannot decide who is going to get slashed, who's going to get rewarded. It's always idle there. Okay. And then, but within this diagram, uh, the, um, the, the point of truth that needs to happen is where there's a NFL, slashable event. Yeah. And if it's middleware, that's where we basically commit the BLS signatures and somebody can listen and say, um, Got it. provide a challenge. Okay. And so, yeah, so right now Ethereum slashing is not live. Eigen slashing is gearing up to go live pretty soon th uh, in theory. That's basically yeah. the like the next steps. Okay, so um, you guys have to write your own slashing contracts, if I'm not mistaken. This doesn't isn't provided to you by Eigen Layer. Yep. How you complex is that? And how how much um, of a problem is that for uh, like you guys and for the AVS space? Yeah, generally, um, slashing logic is not something that it's very very easy to get on the first try. That's why there's also training wheels um, on Eigen Layer. I can give you an example. We're coming from near near protocol do doesn't do um, slashing in the sense of how Ethereum does. They do jailing, so you get kicked out of your validator mm. set. Because what could happen is that your electricity might go out, or your your something in the hardware might go wrong, and then you might get slashed on your funds. So it's a very very um, challenging thing to do. Um, for for l ones too and when the avs has come in basically what you're doing is you're kind of replicating what an l1 might slash on plus more so it's actually a very very interesting design space but it is like it's i love i'm a <laughs> i'm a technical person i like this but if you're like a a regular let's say um developer that is an app developer this is not going to be a, a, like as easy as you would do as on a contract um, but the cool thing is eigenlayer is making this as easy as possible for everyone they're providing enough primitives for you to go ahead and implement these okay. and as like seasoned avs developers as enough for labs we're also going to be providing some we're going to explain it in the later enough protocol but we're going to be providing some kind of like blueprint logic for 
um, all of these slashing slashing things because some of the slashing is very very like double double signing is a very very easy to understand thing to do and you can have a very small contract that you can deploy and you can attest to it um, but there's more complex things that but this is a very interesting design space right it's like building blocks on top of building blocks and eventually it's going to be almost like open zeppelin contracts where you just like import it into your contract and you immediately have it yeah so do you guys have to wait until slashing goes live to write your contracts or are, are those ready now or are they in process yeah there's there's slashing sl like i said slashing is something that is not easy to get in the first try eigenlayer is working on it we're working on it it's more like a like open source implementation of but it changes every every not day but like every week or so so it's yeah it is very very maybe not anymore but in the beginning it was changing every week actually uh, but we're working with eigenlayer team to kind of implement hear from them what they're changing what they're thinking also put our input into how their design is working the, the other thing to bring it up maybe is like there's going to be a lot of these avs as a service platforms yes right like i think yeah um, we've seen this with Rollup as a service. I mean, Frot and I saw it last year where there was only one and then there was like 15 at one like in over like four or five months. Like I've started seeing that more now. Like there's, there's three or four that I've kind of popped up already. And like these are going to be pretty, you know, they're going to come in. They're going to learn from Eigenlayer and they're just going to like standardize those. And they're just going to deploy these with like a click of a button, like a wizard yep. from Altlayer is already getting there, right? So I'm quite excited about that. Like, I think there's going to be like, now there's 100 ABSs on the test net. And then there's going to be like uh, on the on the whole ski uh, registry. Now I'm, I see a future where there's going to be like 1,000, right? That That's yep. not far. Um, and you know, with technology, like I did this math the other day. When we started working with Eigenlayer, when we were at Nier, um, there was like eight AVSs, I think, at that time. Like now, almost a year later, it's like hundred on on the whole ski, right? So you already had a ton X last year. Um, so these are gonna like as the standardization goes goes live, like there's gonna be way more AVSs than than you think. Like everybody will try to, uh, and we think it's not only on Ethereum. Like we can talk about that later too. It's gonna be everywhere. Um, so that's why we were pretty selective with uh, teams that we chose to have on this series. Um, there's going to be a lot of bandwagon hopping on AVSs. Um, yeah. We get pitched on the latest AI cross-chain modular AVS a couple times a month. AI operating system is pretty fun. Uh, but <laughs> cool. <laughs> anyway. Well, thanks um, for that. Yeah, can, awesome. Can keep going? Yeah, sure. So we, we announced this um, almost like two, three weeks ago now, which is we're building, um, so we're building a new product called Knock Protocol. Um, we won't give too many of the technical details. There will be blog posts coming up from both, both I think Eigenlayer side and us that how this is going to work, but we have started to do the development on our side. Um, so the goal here is maybe the story goes is, you know, we're, I, we're, we're, we, we love Ethereum, but we come also from near, um, and there's been interest actually, cause we are known on the near side. There's been interest to put near assets into our AVS and currently the way you know you can put any ERC twenty to eigenlayer contracts, so as other restatement platforms. Um, the problem with this is like you need to bridge uh, from from near to ETH, and um, the Rainbow Bridge, which is a canonical bridge, is it takes like eight hours to sync. It's an optimistic bridge, obviously, but it it you know it takes a lot of time. Um, so we saw a world where. You know, and we, we've been chatting with a bunch of different AVSs. Um, they they are quite interested to get other assets to um, to kind of bolster their security. So we see a future where um, you can you can restake from anywhere, um, but also reward from anywhere. Um, so assets stay where they are, and the contribution is native rather than bridged assets because bridging is like you can bridge a hundred different ways and. There's a lot of risks, but instead, let's just keep the assets where they are. Um, so that's what we're working on. And some of the things we see that we think are quite exciting is like better DevX. So instead of doing one blockchain, you can do multiple blockchain for the middleware logic. Um, you, you get improved safety. So you get like pulling native assets for shared security. Um, you also get multi-chain restating strategies like have like for us, for example, when we're if we're doing L1 to L2, L1 to L1 or other ones, like we should be able to get some of the other assets to back those up. Um, but also like 
some of the things is like cost optimization. You asked a good question is like how much shield I'm getting. Um, like, is there a way where I can actually like in an intent matter, optimize my cost as an AVS and say, Hey, I only want to base, like pay 20 basis points. Is there a world where I can grab that? So that's where our heads are at. Like after an FFL is going live, uh, in the, in the next coming months, this is where we will be like focusing more on and like working with AVSs to provide these uh, sort of benefits with Eigenlayer, right? So like we are giving these native assets from other chains. So there would be like, expect like nuffle contracts everywhere. But um, the the accounting is almost like settlement is on Eigenlayer. So it's more like a, I would say it's more like a restating protocol that settles on Eigenlayer itself. Um, so that's kind of a bit of an alpha. That's what's going to come up from Nuffle over the over the next couple of months. Sweet. Well, I'm excited to to have a look at the back end on this. Um, I don't have many questions now, just based on kind of like this slide. But um, yeah. super cool. Just wanted to share that as an as an alpha for for the. Thank you for the roll up. Yeah, for the roll up because we know Andy quite some time now. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> awesome um cool sweet um well i think that's the last slide yep so you can check out your twitters and things i should not yeah but anyway uh twitter twitter yeah twitter is uh twitter is mr alton tatar uh that's our nuffle labs is our twitter uh we've been growing nicely there so we we share a lot of our updates on 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 both channels frats is also it's a bit it's a bit complicated name so maybe I'm, you can I'm gonna change it i'm gonna change it just after, after this call and i'm gonna i'm gonna let you guys know because um, the last time no i tried to read it he's like dude i can't read this i don't what know what's going on yeah, yeah i probably um, have to change it to my name last yeah time. yeah so um cool but this is uh this is us we're quite excited about this sort of fluffy um waffle brand that we're building which is uh which you might see more and more merch in the next coming months with this one too um awesome um i guess uh leaving leaving you guys with one thing is um in the in the broader kind of ecosystem of of eigenlayer um kind of what do you think is the the core wh what is the core competency of this idea of restaking and extending economic security um what is the core like what is the core reasoning for building on eigenlayer and for uh you know kind of using this technology rather than building a roll up or building an l1 um or app chain etc yeah i think frat and i both would have different answers on this one um so number one like founder has always been very important for us as a team like we love Ilya as a one like that's our first like kind of getting into the space really really uh, we work really close with Ilya still um and then the other thing is like Shram has just stroked me as a very strong founder uh, with like really, you know, has a very long term mindset. So we want to be a, like we want to be in the communities where we know there's a five or 10 year game um, and maybe more. Um, so that's number one. Number two is like we have built near protocol as the team. Like it is very hard to build an L1. Like I know it just takes a couple of years to build one. You go, you know, you build a new consensus like if you fork cosmos sdk people are like well you forked this one so like like tenderman for example right so the the benefit here is like i can actually bootstrap my network pretty fast right like in three three to six month period versus like uh like two three years period of development so that that excites us you can go to market pretty fast with with avs's and the other thing is like you know we're talking about blockchain improvements for a while now, but there's still things that you can't do with blockchains there. You know, there are state machines, um, you know, they, they sometimes come in with bulky and fat protocols. So the the benefit of this is you can, you can do pretty much anything with verifiable compute, right? So you, obviously there's crypto centric views of this where, you know, um, like oracles and um, like fast finality layers us, like us that can't be done on blockchains are available with the ABSs. You see ZK, ZK core processors like Lagrange and Brevis and other ones that are improving DeFi. So like things that you can't do before, even just saying that I run this database and I'm proving that, that I've done this thing on chain so that DeFi can use this. So you get very like what uh, Ishan and, and, and Shiram calls like intelligent DeFi uh, that we're quite excited about. But there's also ZKTLS, which is, you know, just being able to 
prove any like um, arbitrary data from internet to uh, to contracts on Ethereum or anywhere else really to be able to improve applications. So I see that as like um, there's two categories where you can do a lot of things off chain that is improving um, improving just general um, general infrastructure, but also um, applications as well. Like you can get way more data, uh, way way more cheaper and more efficiently. So the end game is pretty cool. Like I think. There's even things of AVSs that we probably haven't figured out yet. Like that was the joke of like self-driving AVS. Like like maybe maybe it's it's actually makes sense, right? Like you were testing that you've done something right for this for the sake of society. So there's like a huge. Um, I think it's a bigger movement than people think. Yeah, yeah. My my I I, I agree with everything you said, Alton. Um, my also a couple of more things that I want to say is like some things you cannot do with a blockchain. You just you cannot. Create a fast finality layer on a blockchain because it has to settle. Sorry, like on an L2 because it has to settle back, so it just doesn't work. So there's stuff that you cannot build on a on on an L2 or a blockchain that you can build with AVSs. You're not really bound by any VM that you have to roll. You can just write any kind of code. You can just just write Java and have a credible commitment that you can provide on Ethereum, and then you can just roll with it. So time to market is just way 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 faster. Um, with AVSs, and this is going to get faster as we as we process because the DevX is being worked on. Eigenlayer is a is a great place to be, and something that you cannot absolutely cannot do on any kind of objectively um, objective verification is what Eigen Token is doing. Just like I told you about, right? So we don't know if if an L2 forks. We don't know the canonical chain, but by using Eigenlayer, you can actually have a system that can have social consensus on the service that you're running. And that is the, that is the reason why we wanted to also be on Eigenlayer, um, because of this old new innovation that is coming from Eigenlayer ecosystem. Um, I'm very, very excited about I'm This is like one of the t I've been in this industry for a while. Um, and this is like, I believe that this is one of the zero to one um, innovations that I've seen in, in quite some time. I think DeFi was one, um, L2s were the, were the other one, sharding was one. Um, and I think this restaking and um, just generally running whatever you can off-chain and having credible commitments on on-chain is, is very, very exciting as a developer myself. Awesome, guys. Thank you for coming on. It's a pleasure. Thanks for answering my questions and putting together the slides. And um, great work. Likewise, man. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Thank you.